Hi everyone, Chris here, Hawker Systems Analysis Services. Today I want to talk about three tools, the combine, the cavity, and the indent, and really what the differences are. Now in analysis services, I have to simplify customer's models, and that usually involves removing material interferences and filling in gaps that don't belong there. Well, depending on the situation I'm faced with, I will use one or more of these three tools, and I want to explain to you how I choose between them. So, let's start at the part level. I have this multi-body part here, and really my goal is to make a little runner that fits in this hole here, but I want it to actually be perfectly sized. I don't want it to be oversized like it is right now. Easiest way to do this is to make a boss extrude like I have here that's oversized and then just subtract out any material interference. So, how do I do this? Well, let's take a look at a couple different tools. The first tool I want to look at is the Combine Subtract tool. So that's an Insert Features Combine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that runner body, that boss extrude, as my main body. And then the bodies to combine, or in this case, the bodies I want to subtract away, it's going to be the upper half of my mold. Okay? Say OK. Well, my runner looks good, but what happened? It removed the upper half of my mold, right? And that's just the way the combine tool works, is you select the upper half of your mold as the part you want to remove, and it actually takes away that body as well. Well, you know, in some cases you might want that, but in this case, that's not really what I want. So, I'm going to have to use a different tool. Well, let's take a look at the indent tool. Now this is an in insert features indent. And what this is going to do is I can select the target body again being my runner. I'm going to use these, this cut option and I'm going to select the tool body region being that upper half of my mold. Go ahead and select that. Say OK. And look at that. Did the exact same thing as my combine subtract, but it kept all the bodies involved, right? And this is really what I want if I'm working at the part level. Okay, well, that's great. What happens if I'm working at the assembly level? How would I do the same thing? Okay, well, let's switch. I have the exact same model, but at the assembly level, and this is really broken up into the top half and bottom half of my molds as two different parts and then the actual camera body or half the camera body as the third part. Now I've already created that boss extrude that's going to be my runner and it's inside of my camera body part. Okay, So now what I essentially want to do is I want to remove material interference but it's not within the same part. It's across bodies or across parts. So, let's take a look at insert combine. Okay, so I'm going to do a subtraction. If I go to my runner as my main body, and then for the bodies I want to combine, or subtract in this case, I can select this upper half of my mold. Well, you see I'm clicking on it, nothing's actually getting selected in the bodies to combine. The reason is the combine tool won't let you select parts belonging to or select bodies that belong to different parts. Right? You can't create these in context references with the combine tool. So we're going to have to use a different tool. Well, what about that cavity tool? If you go to insert features, they have this cavity tool here. Go ahead and select that. And what the cavity tool is going to do is it's going to ask me to select a part that I want to subtract. So in this case, I want to subtract the upper half, or this part, from my camera body, which includes the runner. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, say OK. And it subtracted it. All right, looks pretty good, right? Now, what happens if you actually don't want to subtract one part from another part? What if you want to subtract one body from another body? But let's say those two bodies belong to two separate parts. What do you do? Well, let me show you. Let me delete that cavity tool. And let's use that indent tool again. So I'm going to go ahead and say insert features and go to my indent tool. My target body again is that runner. And I'm going to use that cut option. 
And for my tool body, I'm going to select the upper half part again. But notice it's actually picking the body of that part, not the whole part. So go ahead and say OK. It's done the same thing. The biggest difference between the cavity tool and the indent tool is the cavity tool is going to remove one part's material interference from another part. The indent tool is going to do the same thing, but it's selecting body to body, not part to part. So I'm going to summarize everything. If you're at the part level, you can use the combine subtract tool, but remember it's going to remove the tool body when you do that. The indent tool will keep all of the bodies that you use. At the assembly level, you can't use that combine subtract tool because it just won't let you create in context references. You can use the cavity tool at the assembly level, but remember the cavity tool is subtracting one part from another part. The indent tool is going to allow you to select a body and subtract that body from another body. And you can create in context references there. Well, that's all I had for right now. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more tips and tricks.